the house uh, Dad bought it in uh, early 1900. Mother had not seen the house, but when she saw it, she said, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, okay, I'll do some things I'll fix it up. People were asking for a nice place to sit down. And we decided the village needs a restaurant. The food you make is wonderful. <laughs> sometime between 6.30 and 7 in the morning. Um, kind of go up to my office, do a couple uh, administrative things. Uh, people start showing up around 7.30 in the morning, uh, the breakfast cooks and also our hostess um, and servers. Um, breakfast goes until around 11. Uh, multiple people show up in that time, uh, different, different servers, different cooks. So I come in and like walk through the line and I'll turn all the equipment on, turn the ovens, the dishwasher, the stove, everything. And then I'll come back down and I'll get all like my utensils and knives. I'll pull, start pulling food from the walk-in and like heating things up to put in the steam table, getting like an ice bath to put all my breakfast things in that aren't already like in the Bay Marie. And then I'll start doing the prep list. So like doing big items, like easy stuff at first in case I get busy and then just cook throughout the day, prep when I can. When I get here, I touch base with my crew. First off, where are we at, what's been done, what's need to, what needs to be done. Um, and then I'll touch in, touch base with TJ, Quinn, who's my boss, make sure that he doesn't have anything from higher up that I need to know about. <clears throat> and then um, I guess go back down to the kitchen and attack prep and help my crew out and you know in some kitchens the chef is kind of off on his own but we all chip in we all do the prep list it's a chef inspired restaurant so there's there's a lot of um, that's my background as being a chef um, so when I came here a couple years ago, um, I, I wanted to make sure that we focused on some of those, um, making things from scratch. Uh, you know, we have a, a farmer who grows uh, produce for us, um, that we, she, she grows it just for us. Um, so we're always um, trying to hit on the local seasonal ingredients. Um, we understand that some of the things that we make aren't maybe the most efficient. Um, we can't be the cheapest, um, but it's certainly, um, we put a lot, of, a lot of hard work into our food. Um, and we also uh, really stress that, that story uh, behind what we're doing. We're not just opening up a box of food, dumping it in a deep fryer. We, uh, you know, we're, we're making everything from scratch and that's, that's part of our story. One of the things that I really like about the clean house is that it's very farm to table. So we get as much stuff as we can locally, like the produce comes from the farms, our meat comes from like local meat sources, everything that we can get locally we do. And then we also, do almost everything on our menu ourselves. Like we make it from scratch. And like where I used to work before, everything was like coming frozen and things like that. So you get like a better quality of food here. Anybody can cook food, anybody can. I mean, you know, you have kids right out of high school cooking food, you have kids in high school cooking food. Um, to be a chef is nothing new. It just requires a little bit of experience. You know, you can't do it in one week or, or even one year. That being said, you know, our food is incredibly important to us. You know, we make everything from scratch. From scratch, just about, we 
bring in and work with local ingredients, including our proteins, not just our produce. Like they want us to experiment with food. Like that's how we come up with our specials. Cause like, you know, one day for lunch I made this like really interesting sauce, and then we used it for the next like month because it was just so good. Um, but yeah, you really you really do get the freedom to kind of do whatever you want, and then you know you may be onto something, and they might even put it on the next menu. One of the best things that I've ever encountered about the kitchen is that the level of freedom which I've been given as a chef to come up with specials typically, um, our latest static menu, uh, the one that we run for two years at a time, um, most of those recipes were mine, a few of the standards you know, that have been on there for 10 or 12 years, you know, they're not going to move because they're tried and true, but um, you know, the, the idea of moving forward with making everything from scratch was, you know, to design these recipes around that. But as far as specials go, absolutely, I've been given creative license and it's given me an opportunity to push boundaries for myself. Um, just last week, we did the coffee braised brisket, six hours brisket um, rubbed with salt, kosher salt, cracked black pepper, garlic, onion. Um, it's all cooked with celery, onion and carrot, and then our Whiff Roasters coffee that we serve here at the restaurant. We braise it in that. And then the juice from that, I took and reduced that and made a coffee with rhubarb and made a coffee rhubarb demi-glace um, for a separate dish where I did a pulled pork, um, which was house roasted. And then the brisket we used for one sandwich and then the demi we used for another one. phrase that said, you know, we are ladies and gentlemen serving ladies and gentlemen, you know. It's important to respect the people that you work with and it's important to respect the people that you're serving. So that being said, you know, our level of, you know, food safety excellence, we won that award this year because of how we follow sanitation law and how we exceed at it. And, and it's absolutely incredible what we've done with our kitchen as far as establishing systems to make sure that we stay on our game as far as sanitation is concerned. And when you don't have to worry about those things, that's where you can put your creativity and your love into the food. And I think that's what makes us different is that we have you know, this, this foundation of you know, respect, professionalism, and integrity that allows us to stand up above and on a platform essentially and be able to work from there instead of always having to look up at something it then shows in our food and, and I've, I've never worked in a kitchen where the level of camaraderie is what it is. You know, we're always excited to see each other, we're always um, working together as a team. We've definitely put a lot of um, emphasis on culture here at Kitchen Kettle Village um, and the Kling House. So uh, we have, a, I think we have a, gr a great group of people that work here. Um, it's not in a lot of restaurants, you'll see a uh, front of the house and the back of the house cooks, servers, um, issues with each other, um, pointing fingers, things like that. We work very, very hard to make sure that that does not happen. Uh, we all try to have the same message. We try to be very clear in our mission um, to provide world-class service, um, and that's what we're trying to do. World-class products, world-class service, um, to create a simply world-famous experience for our guests. Teamwork is one of our values here at Kitchen Kettle Village, so I think that we do work pretty well together. 
every guest that comes into this restaurant, we try to make their experience personal and amazing for them, for each and every person, you know, whether it be a child or an adult. Um, but I think that we're unique. That and our level of, of cuisine is, you can find it in most places, of course, you know, everybody has a fried chicken sandwich. Not everybody does it by hand to order every single time. So um, that's that level of de dedication and professionalism as well. And that's what makes us different.